is the Camp Baker Show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kev Baker, and this is tonight's Kev Baker Show right here on Truth Frequency Radio, www.tfrlive.com. Please don't forget, I've got my own website as well. You can go and check out that at kevbakershow.com. Sometimes add extensive notes to some of the shows that we do on here because sometimes, even with two hours of radio, that just isn't enough to paint the full picture that we're trying to relay to you, the listener. So from time to time, I do add articles to the website. I'm going to be doing a lot more work on the website in the coming weeks, so keep an eye open for that. I'm looking into starting something over on Patreon as well. I've been really impressed how that's gone for my good friend Anthony Patch. I just have to figure what kind of exclusive content I can give away to you patrons. But that's for another show altogether. Now, unfortunately, I'm still here by myself tonight. And my good friend, Johnny Whistles, he's still suffering from these health problems that have been literally plaguing him for months now. Now, as you know, I've had my own health problems. I haven't exactly had far to go and seek them in recent times. And I sometimes wonder if the content material that we cover on the show may have something to do with not only Johnny's health, but my own too. And over the course of a couple of years now, we have been going very, very in-depth on targets such as modern mind control, targeted individuals, gang stalking. And I would imagine that covering these actual topics in itself is enough to paint a target on people's backs. Now, I'm not a medical professional, so I certainly am in no position to diagnose neither myself or Johnny Whistles. However, I do keep an open mind to the fact that because we have been covering this kind of information, it could well have put us in the firing line. I think it's quite strange that after a year of really, really bad heart problems and two heart attacks to kick it off, that now I'm in a position where my MRI scan has one of the top cardiologists in Scotland smiling. And he's smiling because, as I shared with you on Friday, I've become what he calls a known unknown. They know that something happened to my heart, but the cause of that will remain unknown. And this happens from time to time. And that doesn't alleviate my spidey senses whatsoever when it comes to what caused all of this in the first place. Now, while I've been uncovering some of the deeper and darker aspects of these topics and just what is going on in the world, I've been lucky enough and blessed enough to come across an individual, a great gentleman by the name of Dr. Eric Karlstrom. And the doc is back with me tonight. And I'm sure we've got a lot of returning listeners. But if you just bear with me till I inform the new listeners just who the doc is, because the doc comes to us with a wealth of knowledge and experience. And he's actually used to be the Emeritus Professor of Geography at the California State University and recently completed a 30-year teaching career. Now, he taught physical and environmental geography courses as well as courses cross-listed with geology department and an honours course. Now, throughout his career, Dr. Karlstrom has continued his research programme in soils and geomorphology as a means of constructing quaternary paleoclimates. Now, he's also the author or co-author of many earth science publications, and he is one of the leading researchers, in my opinion, into everything, and I mean everything, to do with the world of gang stalking, targeted individuals, mind control, and everything else that goes along with that. And for some time now, we've looked at the tactics, the techniques of all of the above mentioned subjects. And for a change now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the people behind this. Not the elites, not the governments, but the people on the ground. People like you and I who are roped into these 
gang stalking operations. And tonight is going to be a very, very important show indeed. So if you are on social media, please inform all of your contacts right now that we are going live with Dr. Eric Kalstrom. Doc, thank you so, so much for continuing to do these shows. And like I was saying in opening up there, I mean, I can't say definitively that either myself or Johnny Whistles have fallen victim to gang stalking or anything like that. However, with everything that I've learned from your research and the research of others that you've tirelessly put together for everyone to look at, I would be stupid not to keep my mind open to the fact that some of the things that I've gone through and Johnny is going through actively right now, I mean, these are classical signs of people that are being targeted. Yeah. Uh, well, Kev, uh, thanks for having yeah. this uh, extended conversation with me about these incredibly important topics. And I sure feel bad and sorry about uh, the health problems that you have suffered as well as uh, Johnny. Uh, sounds like you're kind of on the uptick and he's on the downtick right at the moment. Uh, but yet we, we maybe should at some point talk about your your symptoms um, and what you're experiencing because they both sound very classic. Um, my, my websites, Kev, are uh, um, uh, gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com, which uh, I think has probably upwards of 500 posts now. <laughs> um and uh, including about 60 some interviews that I've done mostly on this topic. Um, and with you over the last year, we've done one one a month. So we've got at least 12, 13 or 14 already on this topic. Uh, so we're starting to s kind of understand it. It's very confusing. I also have a website called 911nwo.com, which precedes the gang stalking mindcontrolcults.com website and, and is actually kind of form the basis of gang stalking mind control cults. I think they're all very, very related. Same people, same program, um, same world conquest program, uh, using this, uh, you know, atomic bomb equivalent or greater than atomic bomb uh, potential of, of mind controlling human beings and cloning, uh, cloning them and, you know, causing genocide with these technologies, both individual and, and groups. I also have a website, naturalclimatechange.org, that actually fits more into my academic background. Uh, you know, why do we get these scientific lies? Well, it's all part of the same program. Uh, we can demonstrate that as well. The, the man-caused global warming fraud, of course, is meant to also throw us into one world government and one world religion. Um, and then I also have a website, sanluisvalleywaterwatch.com. I live in Southern Colorado. Uh, on uh, right next to one of the largest freshwater aquifers in North America. And uh, having lived here for a while, I've noticed some very, very interesting politics, international, having to do with the United Nations, and uh, looks up to me a lot like a, a resource grab. And that's the topic of some of my articles. And then finally, my music site is ericcarlstrom.com. But yeah, I, I thought, uh, you know, again, you and I have talked about this and Johnny, uh, you know, for over a year now. And uh, I think our, because we have been able to, you know, pull in information from many books and YouTubes and, and uh, articles, uh, our understanding of this topic has increased exponentially, which isn't to say we understand it completely, but we're starting to get a pretty good handle on it. And uh, it is very serious. We do have a tiger by the tail. It's uh, Dr. Ronnie Kilda, who uh, her book, I think, is perhaps the book that I would recommend to others above all all others, uh, called Bright Light on Black Shadows. Uh, she wrote, uh, well, she was murdered by this program after 30 years of being tortured. She was the chief medical officer of uh, northern of Finland uh, with many degrees, advanced degrees in medicine. And Dr. Rani Lina Lukanen Kilda, this book came out in 2015, the year she was killed, murdered, and is very poorly edited, but even so, there's an enormous amount of research in it and accurate information, I find. Uh, and she makes the comment in there that uh, this gang stalking mind control program is the number one main policy of the United States. Now, <laughs> think about that. <laughs> now we're talking, you know, the the uh, perhaps the greatest military intelligence uh, 
um, organization in the history of the planet, and the wealthiest for sure, uh, the the executive arm, the military arm of the New World Order, uh, and their main goal, according to Dr. Kilday, is is uh, mind control and uh, manipulation of of people's uh, of uh, well total total control of the individual, uh, total control technology. So we're starting to get into understanding how this total uh, control technology might operate. We, we talked about Brian Tu's hypothesis uh, a couple shows a year ago, uh, Kevin, and uh, that was, you know, mind boggling. Remote neural monitoring, NSA, uh, computer, satellite, brain linkups uh, with technology that goes back for many decades that the average person has has not a clue about. So I suggest it's time to uh, turn off television if you are concerned about the future of your family and yourself <laughs> and, and take that mental energy and, and use it for something uh, useful like like defending yourself from, from these invisible weapons, these non-lethal electromagnetic uh, weapons, which, uh, which are, uh, you know, developed by the military over the last 70, 80 years and which are now deployed not only by militaries, but by police departments and private groups. Um, so uh, we've learned a lot. Uh, we're we're going to learn some more. And, you know, I've put together a few things on my website, gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com, trying to understand what's going on with the perps, the perpetrators, also called surveillance role players. And... Uh, uh, bear in mind that in 2003, in the Boston Globe, uh, it was announced that the, the new Department of Homeland Security uh, wants to uh, recruit 100 million American citizens to be part of their citizen network of spies and rats and cockroaches. And, and well, they don't use those terms, of course, but that's what these people are. Hundred million people out of a population of what three hundred and fifty million? Yes, that's, that's huge, Doc. It truly is. And I mean, over here in the UK, like I was sharing with you, more and more commonly now we're seeing local newspapers covering stories featuring teenage cadet police forces. Now, one of the ones that I sent to you, and I just came up with that off the top search of Google. There's many to look for. And this comes from the Trafford area of Manchester. And they've got 13 to 16-year-olds out there on litter patrol. But while they're on litter patrol, they're to note down any other problems that they might see. What's going on in people's gardens? What's going on with people in the street? Anything the police need to be checking into? And this, for me, I mean, this is training the youth of today to be policing their own. And this is exactly tying in with this 100 million strong force that the America would like to recruit to police their own people. I mean, this is ridiculous, Doc. Yeah, there's an excellent book by a British guy named A.K. Forwood uh, called Gang Stalking and Mind Control. And he said the goal of all this is to establish a self-policing fascist state. Well, yeah. So get the citizens at, at you know at the ground level to police the uh, the streets, so that there can be no possibility of someone who is uh, maybe not ideologically assimilated, <laughs> so to speak, with the goals of the new fascist world order. Um, you know, the Department of Homeland Security. One of the people that was the architects of that was in the East German Stasi uh, secret police in which one out of six citizens of East Germany were recruited by this secret police to spy on their neighbors. So, uh, you know, what is the psychology of a person uh, who is willing to rat out uh, his neighbor and willing to uh, use directed energy weapons against his neighbor? Uh, how do they co-opt these people? What enticements do they give them? What lies do they tell them to make them... Um, I don't want to say satanic scum, but but that does come to the top of my mind. <laughs> I mean, this is where I can't quite wrap my head around this, because, I mean, we should all be looking out for our neighbors, our friends, our relatives. And I honestly, I love to try and put myself in other people's shoes, Doc. I really do. And I find it hard to empathize or even sympathize or even appreciate why anybody in their right mind 
would choose to actively put somebody they don't know or somebody even worse that they do know under this kind of system that we've been talking about now for over a year. I just can't wrap my head around what brings people to that point of becoming a stalker. Yeah, well, this is this. I hope we can talk about this, Kev. And uh, I've got a number of posts. If you go to my gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com website, uh, I've got a number of subheadings. The one on the far left for your listeners is just gang stalking. And under that heading, if we go down, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, bit of, bit of, gang stalking. I've got gang stalking, TI statements, mind control cults, electronic weapons, war of terror, the controllers, corrected history, new world order, and audio visual. Uh, and then under gang stalking, my recent, most recent post, gang stalking and mind control in the movies. They do, and they've done a lot of predictive programming on this to get the public ready. And those, and someone was took the time to list some of the best movies. We had talked about that a little bit. I've been working on my best acronyms for gang stalking and targeted individuals uh, to describe what's really going on, or to try to. And then I've got a number of posts that kind of try to figure out what these perps are doing and why. One of them is an article that's on the internet called Confessions of a Gang Stalker, aka Life in the Syndicate. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that. Also, again, these are the top ones now under gang stalking on my gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com website. The next one is Key in Insights into Global Organized Stalking Mind Control System from Dr. Ronnie Kilda's book, Bright Light on Black Shadows. The next one is a uh, Testimony of a whistleblower named Brian Coffrin, who was an ex-security uh, industry whistleblower. Uh, uh, he worked with SIS, Securities Industries Systems. Um, and, then a, and then an article for some, some people in Australia, uh, gang stalking is community policing, a.k.a. communist policing, and it poses a threat to democracy and public safety. Okay. And then we can get into specifics. Yeah. Go ahead. A lot of listeners down in Australia, so I'm really, really happy that you, you've actually covered that aspect of it because, you know, I still don't think people appreciate the global reach of this project. And, you know, you don't have to be living in the US or over here in the UK to be affected by any of these programs. And it truly is global in its reach. And there's one article there that you mentioned near the start, Doc, the Confessions of a Gang Stalker. I mean, I think that's really where we need to start off tonight and look at that because this, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, what is it like to be in one of these syndicates? Right. So, you know, the the uh, I think we, we discussed in some of our previous shows, like one on precursors to gang stalking, that in 1959, a, a guy with a Council on Foreign Relations named Huntington, Samuel P. Huntington, wrote an article for Foreign Affairs uh, about the need in the United States for a com combining of the military with civilian forces. And, uh, uh, well, the CIA, where do they get their cues? Well, they get their cues. They're the executors of, of ideas that are passed down to them from the Council on Foreign Relations, 80% Jews, by the way. And the Council on Foreign Relations is the American arm of the Royal Institute of International Affairs roundtable groups out of, Eng out of England or, or Britain. And uh, so, you know, we, we can trace these, uh, these ideas and practices uh, to a non-elected elite uh, who kind of uh, mold the direction of society and push it and force it to make these changes. So civil military operations then became a well, you know, what does the military do? The military does what the intelligence agencies want them to do. It's all one, the Department of Defense and the CIA and the NSA, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're all, you know, hand in hand. And uh, so this became then a huge push in the military in the 70s and 80s and 90s and today to combine a civil or civilian and military operations. Uh, that now includes, of course, police departments and many of our police uh, uh Chiefs are going over to Israel to learn how to, you know, uh, treat the American citizens like Palestinians. We, and, of course, uh, under NORTHCOM, which is, was established right after the fraudulent 9-11 terrorist attacks, which are made in America, um, 
then now we have, uh, you know, they have with this phony war on terror, this phony war on terrorism, which then has allowed this incredible fluorescence of private contractors that work with the intelligence agencies and the military. Maybe 70 percent of the work that's being done in this regard is by private companies. So it's this gigantic uh, uh, and very uh, lucrative scam for these companies. Like, uh, for instance, InfraGuard is is uh, one of the FBI's spinoff uh, corporations or, or private uh, security firms, and it's run by ex-FBI uh, guys, uh, you know, right on down the line, DynCorp, CIA, uh, SAIC, CIA. So all of these, uh, or most many of these uh, ex-intelligence agents will work 20 years, draw their retirement, uh, which is lucrative, and then jump over into one of these uh, private security agencies in which they get double or triple their salary. So now they're double dipping. Um, they're still getting paid by the federal government, and they're working uh, for these very lucrative, they're getting these lucrative government contracts to spy on American citizens. Okay, so that's that's kind of what it looks like at the upper levels. And of course, the military has generated all these high technologies, which they, they often refer to as the technology. Um, but at the street level, now we go, we go back to the, you know, the neighborhood watch and the, um, the vigilante thugs uh, who are really the useful idiots, the dupes who are out there doing the street theater and the psy acts and the psychological attacks on these individuals who have been targeted and considered to be targeted individuals. Uh, so what gets them, your question is, what gets them to turn on their neighbors and, um, and uh, you know, obey these orders? Because now they're in, a, they're in a chain of command. And, uh, Kev, you know, if we were to t- dismantle the cell phone towers and the cell phone system, that would pretty well wipe out this system. So I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm not going to say blow up all the cell towers, but I'll tell you what, if we did, this system would, would grind to a halt fast. Because uh, every time I see these people on the street, you know, holding their cell phones and then pointing it at me, uh, you know, half the time they're probably trying to find my picture and then report my location, you know, and and the same with all other TIs. So you have all these street people, these, you know, useful idiots in Lenin's terms uh, who are spotters and maybe psy actors. But but it, going back to this article that you uh, refer to, the Confessions of a Gang Stalker, this was placed on the Internet internet anonymously uh but it does seem pretty credible he actually gives a uh, a a vocabulary that they use which i think is quite interesting um but he says he was offered eventually a place in the syndicate and the syndicate then is this kind of a private profit sharing uh, situation Uh, it presented to him like a fraternity a a masonic like mutual profit organization with uh, very strong police like overtones in which there are distinct ranks. And uh, he was told, you know, a series of lies that he was going to help build a better society. Um, but as he kind of gets it, it's almost like, you know, being a Mason, I guess, you know, as you go up the levels, you you kind of have to commit to the program. And, you know, you, you, know, you swear you're going to cut your throat if you ever reveal the secrets, that kind of thing. Well, this is very similar. So you uh, give up all your own security privileges when you sign up for the syndicate, according to this individual. And uh, you have to attend all these meetings, he says, of mind-numbing pledges and chants. Oh, that sounds a little satanic. Uh, just like Masons. Uh, the premise is that if you sign, by the way, Masons are a Gentile front for Judaism, which, of course, is based now mostly on the the uh, Babylonian or the Jewish Kabbalah, which is a system of of Babylonian black magic, and the Babylonian Talmud. So, you know, Masonry and Judah, I call it Judeo-Masonic Satanism, uh, the system that is running the world. And I would say that is the system that is certainly running the syndicate. Um, uh, but let me get back to this particular guy. He's a low-level guy. He's a manager. He worked his way up to manager uh, from the street-level perps. Uh, but then he found a ceiling. He couldn't get promoted any higher, and he's a little mad, and so now he's going to divulge these secrets. Um, so he's given up his personal liberties for the group. And this is why I'm glad we're doing this show. You know, just in case some of our listeners are thinking about joining up, please listen carefully. Um, uh, you know, you you get promoted uh, if you uh, if you play along. Uh, 
but you're never allowed to leave. We're almost on the break, and I don't want you to be interrupted by that, but I want people to pay close attention to this. Because if you're in America, there's a one in three chance that you could be enrolled into this program. You are This is the Camp Baker Show. Dr. Eric Kalstrom is our special guest tonight, and we are going back into the world of gang stalking, targeted individuals, mind control. And tonight we're taking a look at the actual people on the ground who are running these operations. Now, if you want to check out the doc's work, I urge you all to do so. And one of the best sites out there, it's like a repository for everything and anything you need to know about all the stuff we're talking about here tonight and in the shows we've done previously. Please go to gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. That's gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. Now, the doc mentioned in the first segment of the show there that the DHS over in America, they would love to have a million strong force of people to police the American citizens. No, no, this is 100 million, Kev. <laughs> 100 million, that's right, 100 million. So by that math, that's roughly one in every three people is going to be an active part of the programs that we cover on this show. One in three people. And that's why tonight, Doc, I think it's a really good idea from us to really concentrate on the people, the perps, as you call them, that are involved in all of the street theatre and everything else that goes on in and around these programmes. And we were just starting to touch on an article called The Confessions of a Gang Stalker, a.k.a. Life in the Syndicate. Now, as tonight's show progresses, ladies and gentlemen, we're not just going to present you with the problem because the doc has been working on his own strategies the kind of things that we can do against all of this. But, Doc, let's get back into the confessions of the gang stalker, if we can. And I didn't want you to be cut off by the break there. So we've got a full segment now. I'm obviously going to interrupt and interact with you throughout. But I'm going to hand it over to you now. And, you know, you were talking about from this article how it's almost a Masonic-like structure. And, you know, when you think of the Masons and the secrecy involved there and everything else that goes with it, you know, I think that's a really apt description for the kind of programs we're talking about here. Yeah, this this whole system, which is gigantic, is is kind of an open secret. You know, we're all uh, so many people in society would know about it. But, you know, it's 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 officially it doesn't exist, you see. And so, so uh, we have an enormous encroachment of of deception. I sometimes say that when you're in the program, you're you're in the world of lies, spies, and setups. Um, it just like it's also called counterintelligence stalking. Just like if you were in a world of spies and you were, you know, spy versus spy to use the old Mad Magazine cartoon, or you know the the uh, the, the Cold War type spying. Those, those technologies and techniques are being used against civilians in this program. But, yeah, let's go back to our syndicate. Uh, um, uh, the guy who ex- was exposing something about what the syndicate is like, uh, he's saying that, OK, if you're if you're going to be a member, you have to sign a special contract. And uh, this permits the syndicate to destroy your credibility, which, of course, they do to TIs, um, if you uh, don't play along. And uh, uh, if you have children, you have to send them to education as, uh, uh, in syndicate-owned schools. That gives you an idea how much reach they have. If you have a wife, you have to report on her and allow her to be spied upon. And be prepared to target her if they decide to turn her into a TI. Can you imagine? The official compensation policy is if there is a divorce, you will get to keep the kids if she lodges a divorce. However, She'll get to keep most of the money. <laughs> so, in other words, they think of all these things, and it's in the contract, and I can't imagine anybody. But, see, they also must have enticements, financial enticements. I see my own stalkers riding around in new Harley-Davidson's here in Crestone, Colorado. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have no, no idea how they would get the means, you know, to buy a new Harley-Davidson. 
for fifty thousand dollars. So they they have they have money to to spend on this. This is you know intimately related with the illegal drug trade, according to Dr. Ronnie Kilda, and there's just no lack of funds for this program. Um, so let's go look at the levels of the ranks. Um, the lowest rank would be uh, the pawns or the, quote, concerned citizens. And uh, so a lot of the street theater, the sci acts, the sci attacks would be done to people that don't even know that they're enrolled as part of the syndicate. They think they're a grassroots movement and don't know that there are other people also harassing the target. Um, they talk about the difference between religious actors and punk actors Um and, and we can maybe get into their uh, terminology in a little bit. But then uh, uh, the, the next level up would be the, uh, uh, the Scripting, Observation, and Execution Bureau, <laughs> or the theater. He says, we do the work that the majority of the people with any knowledge of gang stalking will be familiar with, which is pestering and scripting minor incidents for the uh, TIs. In other words, harassing them and, uh, uh, you know, tailgating them and cutting them off and, and gaslighting them, breaking into their homes, etc. The theater is actually divided, he says, into two sub-branches, scripting orchestration officers, or playwrights, as they call themselves, and field officers, or thespians, as we call ourselves. Those are the ones that are doing the street theater. Um, he says, our group has the most variety in our recruits. Our popular sources are the police, the fire department, the zoo, and technicians of any kind. But we, re we recruit from all places. Most members are neighborhood watch types, not official neighborhood watch, but, quote, concerned people. And then the next level up, the Bureau of Authority, a.k.a. the money bags, a very organized system of lawyers, judges, medical officers, psychiatrists, mental health practitioners, etc., doctors. Uh, whenever you're committing a crime for the good of the syndicate, you must always report your location. Then they send Cousin Nancy. This is an affectionate term for the police in the employment of the syndicate that they send to arrest you instead of non-syndicate cops. So you can go straight through the appropriate channels with any, without anything suspicious being seen to tail you and arrest you at the moment. So somebody calls 9-11. Then there's the Bureau of Technology. Uh, there's two kinds. Uh, the Bureau of Technology in the field is the group in charge of electrical equipment. They work alongside the thespians uh, and they gaffer the targets by giving them unusual fatigue, headaches, and medical problems. They can also destroy equipment, computers, screw up televisions, the works. I think they are particularly sadistic, he says. Um, they manufacture pills that can cause deformities in the womb, as well as miscarriage, and give them to women in their food. They can fake AIDS, so the test will show a positive the first time, but subsequent tests show that it was a false positive. In the case of XXX so-and-so, his intent is to create real health problems and ensure, well, I'll skip that. Uh, one field tech I knew had a penchant for giving people syphilis. Uh, they also conduct extensive testing on the target without the target's knowledge. Of course, a lot of targets talk about being non-consensual uh, experimentees, and indeed they are. I the, think that's actually a good term for it, actually, non-consensual experimentees, because none of us at any point would ever consent to any of this. But it says it's like some giant science experiment that is from the realms of the Hammer House of Horrors, Doc. Absolutely. And of course, if you go yeah. back and research, say, the history of MK MKUltra, uh, which is the CIA's uh, covert mind control experiments and programs carried out in the 50s, 60s, and 70s onward, you see enormous collaboration with the top uh, universities and medical establishments in America, with the top psychologists and psychiatrists and, and cognitive researchers, etc. I think that has continued. So these people tend to look at human beings as, as animals, as lab rats. And gee, wouldn't it be fun if we were to do this experiment and see what, what happens? You know, I actually have on my... Uh, website, Kev, a little six-minute YouTube, uh, I think from 2006, in which one, you know, young, eager lieutenant in the in the military is doing a little seminar presentation, trying to get funding for a, for a particular project that he's cooked up, uh, in which they do aerial spraying over the residents of Baghdad. Of course, we're at war with, uh, uh, with Iraq at that time, so they are considered to be, you know, just dog do, I guess, and uh, spray, spray these viruses into the atmosphere 
And then with this will then uh, uh, carry uh, the viruses would allow the brain to reconfigure so that it would it would uh, eradicate change the DNA and eradicate the quote unquote God gene. So these people are playing God. They're they're playing with our minds. Um, they don't necessarily have to, you know, de- do this on declared enemies. They can now do it w- with people who are say watch listed, put on the terrorism watch list in America. These people are considered enemy combatants. So now you have at least two million enemy combatants, or so the military regards it, in America, whose civil liberties have have been stripped completely and who can be non-consensual experimentees. And this is not just in America. This is all over Europe and and all NATO countries in particular. Um, There's there's a real good group called CACHE uh, out of Europe, uh, Magnus Olsen and various people got a lot of their their uh, YouTubes on my website. Listen to Magnus Olson. I mean, he's figured this thing out. And he himself, of course, is one of these uh, targeted uh, non-consensual experimentees. So, uh, yeah, it, like you say, it's it's mad scientist type stuff. Um, and we can talk about, you know, ultimately their goals. But it involves the whole, basically the whole uh, psychiatric, psychological profession. If you, if you listen to Dr. Colin Ross, who wrote a book called uh, The CIA Psychiatrist or, or Bluebird, uh, discussing uh, MK Ultra, And he's a psychiatrist. He's saying the whole profession is complicit in, in the CIA mind control experiments of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and no doubt today. Um, you know, the, 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 the Pentagon has about $800 billion a year budget, and they're more and more determining what kind of research is done at universities. So these university professors and departments are scrambling to get this money, and they will pitch their proposals uh, in any direction that the Pentagon wishes. And the Pentagon is very, very, very uh, intrinsically involved in all these these uh, these programs because they want to win the hearts and minds, you know, of the people. Blah blah blah. Uh, which, you know, that's the nice way of saying it. But what it really is turning into is is a cyborg reality of creating uh, human computer brain computer uh, uh, hybrids uh, which then can be completely controlled the control of technology um, there are the technological control of a human being that's what this is all about and that's what this all boils down to control 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 and you know a lot of us most of us know about all of the ins and outs of the MK ultra programs back in the day. And for me right now, Doc, I mean, this is just the MK Ultra of old being rolled out on a global scale with modern technology and modern techniques. Yeah. And what's surprising, Kev, when you start to get into this, you know, the, the voice to skull technology uh, was declassified in 1974 and was used decades earlier. You know, this this technological ability to use wavelengths of energy to actually uh, insert sounds of voices into people's heads, which bypass the the ear canal that goes directly through the bone. Um, yeah, the, this is old technology, which is which has just become more and more refined as we develop these these tremendous capabilities of increasing our supercomputer capacities and our our satellite coverage of the world and the and the cell tower coverage. Um, it's, it's the world then is, is kind of on lockdown with the, as I understand it, with the, all these different, uh, weaponized wavelengths of, uh, of electromagnetic energy, uh, in the hands of these people, you know, the military, the intelligence agencies. Well, well, there's, so there's two kinds of the Bureau of Technology. There's the field BOTF, and then there's the Bureau of Technology Communications, BOT parentheses C which monitors the target's phone calls, emails, and absolutely everything else. They tend to recruit from the National Archives, Census Takers Office, Records Office, credit card companies, Medicare Insurance. They are the logistics branch, and most of the syndicate's work is done from within legitimate areas. So they're all infiltrated into legitimate businesses, uh, which should give us a lot of pause. Uh, The next level up is the Bureau of Alliances or Trading Partners, uh, which handles their allies. Uh, uh, He makes some comments in here which are a little bit hard to understand. Um, 
So I, I, since I don't understand them, I'll go on to the next one. He says, finally, the Supreme Council controls the entire operation. I have no idea who they are, except they have a fancy name instead of being a bureau. They do not recruit their own men. Um, most of them seem to be wealthy individuals with inheritances that manage to maintain their fortunes from investments. Uh, I, you know, sounds like the Illuminati families to me. And, of course, this is what uh, uh, AK Forward says in his book, uh, Gang Stalking and Mind Control, that this goes directly to the top Illuminati families. And now we have a conduit through which they control through all these different levels of uh, the streets. Um, and the street perps have no idea that they're being controlled by these top, uh, well, um, satanic families. And, and just like anything in the military industrial complex or, or government, I mean, it's all compartmentalized. And even this individual putting it together, Doc, I mean, we have to appreciate that he's only been told certain parts of the story for a reason. And even some of the names of these bureaus and things, I have to imagine that, you know, we can use these names, but did this actor, this person in the syndicate really develop such a, a, a great picture of the full program? I, I think it would be hard for anyone involved in it to really get a full grasp on what's going on here. But he certainly seems to have been involved in in the inner workings of something very, very shady, don't they? Yeah, and you know, I think a little bit of a, isn't that, it's kind of a soft proof. He offers a glossary of terms, and he these terms that they use kind of as their own uh, jargon. According to them, a, uh, they call a TI or a target, they call it a, that person a contract. That's the official term. So they would distinguish an enemy contract or a planning contract. Uh, uh, then they have terms like... Uh, Cherrying, getting out of a legal tangle through the syndicate's intervention. Uh, nipple kisser, a deviant recruit, recruited because of a desire for sadism. Holy poly, a religious Puritan recruit. Uh, the effect, the, the fact that greedy and sadistic recruits are selected for managing jobs more readily than anybody with integrity. Uh, um, FBG, Fertile Breeding Ground, a crew of nipple kissers based on the idea that they are fertile breeding ground for future managers. Uh, mincing, like you mince words, mincing, luring a target into the legal system, in which, of course, they'll lose because they control that. Uh, defacing, making faces at a contract or otherwise intimidating them. Uh, rainbow shock is the uh, term for, that's the fact that you have to act nice to the rest of the public immediately after you stop defacing a contract, you know, which which can be very, very hostile. Uh, a break a leg job is a particularly hostile act against a contract or a plan which involves approaching the target and talking to them. Uh, a Sakura Kai is a crew that is particularly overt in its stalking and gets caught too often. In other words, it has to be cherried all the time. Crew, a unit of recruits and pawns under a single MO, in other words, a group of gang stalkers. Uh, zapparating, using electric devices to affect the health of a target. Does that sound familiar, Kev? Um, Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, we may know somebody who's under. well, many people are undergoing zapparating as we speak. Um, unchained, uncovered authorities that are not pawns or recruits. Those would be the good policemen and the good uh, firemen. Uh, covered, a member of the public that is under the control of the syndicate as a pawn. A public face, a recruit or manager's official life outside of the syndicate. So you might have somebody, you know, who works at the grocery store. Uh, but, you know, in real life, he's also part of the syndicate. He, maybe he's a manager or something. Private life, a syndicate member's activities with the syndicate. Incapacitator a device that affects the sleeping patterns, stress, fatigue, headaches of a contract. An incapacitator would often be these electronic devices, which are fairly easy to get. Now, uh, now Doc, I mean, that sleeping pattern thing that you just mentioned. Now, I personally, for, well, I can't remember how long now, but sleeping does not come easy to me. And I, I've always put it down to the fact that I do the show late at night. Usually it's midnight when I come off the show. Uh, and as, as people will appreciate, the adrenaline is still going. It's still pumping. Hard to get right to bed then. 
But even when I do finally start to feel tired, unbroken sleep, I get very little of that at all, Doc. Now, does that mean I'm being targeted? Well, obviously, I can't definitively say that. However, I used to sleep like a little baby, so I did. And it could just be the electromagnetic radiation that's all around us now. Maybe that's playing havoc with it. I don't know. But it's certainly something that I have to keep an open mind to. And you mentioned zapparation there as well. And this is what really worries me about my good friend and buddy Johnny Whistles, because the one thing that he shared with me at one point when all of this started that really, really got the alarm bells ringing for me was the fact that he said one minute he could be perfectly fine looking at X, Y, and Z on the computer. And then all of a sudden, it would be like an overwhelming sensation of heat or warm energy coursing through his body to the point where even the thoughts that he was having at that immediate moment, they would just all fall apart. His head would just go to mince. And it would take him a good while, Doc, to, you know, steady himself. And I use that word wisely because his equilibrium was all knocked off. Johnny said he'd be standing up at times and it would feel almost like it, this wave was going to take him out. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, and, I mean, this is something I've said to Johnny as well, but that, to me, that sounds very, very suspicious and almost indicative of the kind of thing we're talking about here. Yeah, well, all I can say, Kev, is I've experienced the same thing. Sometimes when I've done these interviews, I've experienced that, and, and it's actually documented on some podcasts where my face uh, turns redder and redder and redder as we go through a two-hour interview start out fine and then by the end of it i'm just you know i've got these heat waves going um through my body which which you know doesn't happen normally um and i've been knocked off my feet uh in my own home and uh, so yeah these are the incapacitator devices apparently that that uh, can be used uh, against targeted individuals in their own homes uh especially and uh, now we're talking about, quote, unquote, non-lethal weapons that the military has been developing, you know, uh, through since the 80s. And they're now very sophisticated. They've weaponized virtually every portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, every frequency. So they can target particular organs. They can change your mood. Um, they have enormous uh, capabilities to, to silently, uh, secretly uh, attack people with these weapons. In fact, this is the revolution in military affairs that the military itself has written about. You know, uh, traditional war is obsolete. Now we're going to do, they're now they're going to do uh, using these non-lethal weapons and targeting individuals and small groups, terrorists, quote unquote. Um, but of course, the real terrorists are them, um, as, as we can prove in a thousand different ways. And as I prove on my websites. Um, so, yeah, they're going after regular citizens. And I'm very sorry to hear that Johnny is experiencing these uh, these uh, this torture and harassment. Um, again, if you get online, you'll see many, many people uh, uh, with similar problems, complaints. And even so, looking at the chat room, I mean, Lechty Lass, somebody I've met personally at a conference here in Glasgow, I mean, she's talking about this warm wave. A lot of people are very familiar with what we're talking about here tonight, Doc. And that in itself is very telling. It shows the level that these operations are going to and just how many people may, I say may, be affected. Because, again, I can't say definitively either myself or Johnny have fallen victim to this. I've got no hard evidence of that. But at the same time, I'm not going to be stupid. I'm not going to bury my head in the sand and think, well, it's OK. It's just a, a vitamin deficiency, which, in my opinion, doesn't account for all of Johnny's symptoms. And I'm keeping a very open mind to the level of attacks that people are under, not just myself, Johnny and you, Doc, but everyone out there right now to a certain degree. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, this very, very sobering, um, serious uh, discussion, um, you know, I'm not trying to exaggerate or we're not trying to exaggerate. We're trying to uh, tell it like it is. 
But what we notice is that, you know, people all over the world are experiencing the same kinds of attacks and the same kinds of symptoms. So they're being attacked with the same protocols, you know, in terms of the gang stalking and the same kinds of electromagnetic weapons. And uh, they're, I think they're being used in different weapons testings programs. Some people are experiencing excruciating pain, uh, you know, almost un, unbearable. I think it's to test uh, the effects of, of these weapons on individuals. Uh, others are experiencing uh, the kinds of things that Brian, too, uh, talked about. He, he experiences an enormous amount of sleep deprivation. He says that's one of their chief techniques is to keep you sleep deprived so that you're then more vulnerable uh, to the electromagnetic attacks that they do against your subconscious, et cetera. The remote neural monitoring, the remote neural manipulation which is old technology. I mean, there, in 1992, a former NSA guy named Akwe, John Akwe, uh, sued the NSA for the this kind of technology. Uh, that lawsuit was thrown out by a, a lawyer who's undoubtedly one of these, uh, 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 you know, cooperating lawyers, uh, uh, judges, I'm sorry, named Stanley Sporkin, who's been involved in more than one of these lawsuits. He threw it out uh, of court. So, of course, it was never settled. But that lawsuit it shows up in the back of Gloria Naylor's uh, book, 1996. I've got it on my website. People can read through that 1990 law. This is the Camp Baker Show. We're number two already on tonight's Kev Baker Show with my very special guest, Dr. Eric Karlstrom. Now, the doc has a lot of websites, but the one that I would tell you is most relevant to all of the stuff we talk about here on the show tonight has to be the amazing gang stalking mind control cults dot com. That's www dot gang stalking mind controls mind control cults dot com. Sorry. Now then, just to pick this up where we left off before the break, and I was mentioning the fact that. Although I certainly cannot definitively say that myself or Johnny Whistles have fallen victim to any of the programs that we cover on here, I do have to think back to when we were doing previous shows with the doc, and one in particular that was very, very emotionally charged indeed. And it became emotionally charged because during the show it became apparent to myself and Johnny Whistles that, you know, gang stalking, targeted individuals, it most certainly isn't something confined to the US. In fact, it came a whole lot closer to home because Johnny was talking with people in the chat room and it turned out that somebody in his local area, in his neighbourhood, maybe five minutes from where he lives himself, was in fact a victim of these programs. Some of the stories that were being shared, they brought a tear to both myself and Johnny's eye. Now, Johnny being the guy that he is, he's the kind of personal touch of KBS. And we all fell in love with Johnny because of the fact he's, he's so nice, so relatable and just down to earth. And what Johnny done was, rightly or wrongly, and I am not attributing or apportioning any blame to the people involved in this whatsoever. But Johnny, being the nice guy he is, he decided to go for a nice cup of coffee with the people involved. And again, I want to reiterate that I'm not accusing the people involved of anything here. However, you know, Johnny going for a cup of tea or social kind of outing with people that had been targeted may have, just may have, put Don Johnny in the crosshairs himself. And this just shows you how close to home and how this is happening all around us. And Doc, you know, I, again, I can't put my finger on it being that being the moment when things changed, but that certainly came in the weeks prior to all of Johnny's problems starting. And again, I am in no way blaming the two individuals that Johnny went for a nice day out with, nothing like that at all. However, just beyond coincidence that after that, and after we'd been going so deeply into these topics, 
we start to see the problems occurring. And you know me, Doc, I, I'm not one that quickly jumps to the kind of harassment from security agencies when we have Skype problems or anything like that. I, I try to keep it real, and that's why I'm keeping an open mind. And I'm not saying 100% that Johnny or myself have been targeted, but it certainly ticks a lot of the boxes, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly does. You know, in America, we the DHS has something like 70 plus fusion centers, uh, which, you know, which are in all the states and uh, in which, um, you know, different elements of society, such as, you know, local, federal and state police um, cooperate to uh, with Neighborhood Watch and other groups to flag or watch list individuals who might be doing something suspicious. And of course they are privy to all the NSA data on where everybody shops and whatnot. And they go through these, you know, this metadata and they, they get some analyst to circle something that looks like it might be suspicious. And if, if you get two or three of those red checklists, apparently, then you are flagged or watch listed. And now your constitutional rights no longer apply. Uh, you are, can be put under active surveillance, which means that they can use these directed energy weapons against you, um, and you've been stripped of your civil liberties. So this is the system we live in now, and it's not just DHS fusion centers. There's also something, I, I don't know how many FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force offices, you know, probably about that many, 70 or so. And uh, so this is the funnel then through which uh, regular individuals can be flagged or watch listed and put into these programs. Now, where Johnny sat down and had uh, tea with somebody, I think you can assume that there is surveillance going on. Um, and it could be that somebody flagged that event and somebody else flagged, uh, you know, the fact that he's uh, on their show or whatever. And whatever it was, he was then put into the program. Um, so it's very sad, but this does seem to be the way it happens um, and, um, you know, to Johnny and the other TIs, including myself, you know, there are some, uh, uh, some strategies that let's talk about that as soon as I get through this vocabulary list here. Um, uh, but let me go through and finish some of these, uh, glossary of terms of our, of our, uh, whistleblower, a former gang stalker. He says voodoo is their term for, uh, acting hostile to targets, such, such as pointing and staring, um, uh, a uh, yellow meat refers to criminals as opposed to concerned citizens and refers to criminals recruited into the syndicate. Um, a gigolo bop is to make sexual advances to an unattractive target. Uh, Canceling is to cause a miscarriage in a female. Um, a hang job is the experience of having a target that one has enjoyed tormenting suddenly commit suicide term used mainly by nipple kissers and neonkias. Uh, you, you see now how grotesque and evil the system is. A uh, crash test dummy, a practice target. Uh, again, Cousin Nancy is a police unit sent to tail a crew of gang stalkers and arrest them before an unchained police unit can do it, thereby keeping them safe to do more uh, gang stalking. Um, uh, uh, XXXX necktie, in other words, bleep necktie, Necktie is a threat, direct death threat made with no intention of it being carried out. Um, um, XXXX uh, deleted law, a police department that is thoroughly under the syndicate's control. Uh, General Lee, Lee Ying is randomly chasing after a target and threatening to rape them before immediately running away. Oh, and there's a swell bunch of people here. Uh, uh, so anyway, deja vu is doing the same skit over and over and over again. So, you know, we have what we have is a criminal operation uh, with the sanction of the syndicate and elements of our own FBI, military, law enforcement, uh, judges, certainly this psychological and med medical profession, the syndicate. And this, you know, this is this has all been very confusing to me, you know, is, uh, you know, who carried out 9-11? Well, we did our we did our we did our uh, show on 9/11. We had big problems. I was I was I think being heavily targeted during the show uh, that we did last year on September 11th. I have maybe one sixth or one tenth of my normal strength and energy level. My voice sounded like you know 
a, a pussycat. I had no energy, Honestly, and my brain was slightly fuzzy. But I would say you were maybe a. 30% of the individual that I'm used to working with that night. That, yep. that was shocking to me that night, that the difference between the show prior to that, that show, and then the show after it, it was quite obvious that something had occurred on that 9-11 special. Yeah, I was being targeted electronically, Kev. I, I have no doubt about that. But what with the conclusion that I came to, which evidently some, some people did not want us to discuss... Uh, with our full um, capacity, is that 9-11 was carried out both by the interagency involving all aspects of our military intelligence and, uh, you know, state agencies, but also by, quote unquote, the Jews. So and, and uh, you know, so th there's there's just enormous evidence that both are involved. Um, and, you know, Doc, a big event like 9-11, I mean, we would still see some of these street actors and the, the thespians, as he named them in there, working, right? And we can look at some of the dodgier kind of news interviews that were conducted in the aftermath of 9-11, where it did appear that the people were almost scripted in what they were saying. They were that telling is, people yeah. what they seen, and that in itself being repeated time and time again, the same language from apparently random witnesses in the street, the same language, it was almost as if they were telling us what we've seen, even though we didn't see it. Well, that's very much true. I mean, you know, it's like, okay, who controls Hollywood? You have this make-believe world. There's a book called An Empire of Their Own. It's about the Jewish control of Hollywood. Well, now the, the military hires these crisis actors for their operations, you know, like Jade Helm, 2015 and unconventional warfare exercise UX uh, 2016. They they actually pay people to be crisis actors, uh, like the surveillance role players. Another name for perps are are paid uh, to to do these jobs. Uh, the military will pay civilians to play these roles in their in their exercises. So again, we're seeing this kind of common thread as as the society you know, kind of breaks down and becomes crazier and crazier. You have all these actors in society doing these secret roles and they're being paid well, evidently, uh, to do this, to disrupt. And and it, it, what is gang stalking really in, in intelligence and military parlance? It's disruption uh, activities um, to to disrupt the life of the target and to destroy it. And uh, so and, and to do so in a manner that the state is is not. Uh, exposed or considered uh, to be guilty. And yet it is the state, the government, which is, you know, ultimately paying for uh, these uh, these uh, uh, eliminations, these citizen uh, executions, covert, extrajudicial, silent um, uh, destruction of individuals' lives and a completely uh, unconstitutional. So we now have the state, the U.S. government and others such as yours, uh, doing uh, in the background, presiding, uh, or at least cooperating with these uh, very, very unconstitutional and criminal and even satanic uh, activities. So this is a very serious state of affairs. And, uh, you know, Americans need to somehow get a hold of, you know, what's happening and come back to our constitutional rights and hold those accountable that are, you know, uh, um, committing these criminal felonies. Because every single act of gang stalking is a criminal felony and you know we need to we need to figure out how to hold them accountable now i wanted to give a little bit of uh, right now maybe an interlude i get lots of mail and and of course email messages is about this from people who are suffering and some of the letters are very poignant and you know kind of heartbreaking but this is a positive one this is uh, uh, somebody sent me a newsletter that they published it's called the westfield gang stalker Volume one, number two, December uh, 2017. And this individual uh, says right at the top, keeping you informed of counterintelligence stalking and disruption operations in our community. Why? Someone has got to, and WGS has the fortitude. Okay, here's an individual with some courage and some smarts. They're, they're, they're going to the streets. They're making a newsletter. You know, I don't know how it's distributed, but the, the goal is to educate your fellow neighbors. And the first three or four pages is a brief introduction to what gang stalking is. And then after that, and I don't think I'll read it because we've, we've talked about most of these things. And what he says is correct. 
Then he does a recent gang stalking related activity in Westfield, Massachusetts. And then he has a poem um, for humanity. And uh, you know, the whole thing's about eight pages. Uh, he has little, uh, little quotes here like, uh, Cursed is he who strikes his neighbor in secret, Deuteronomy 27, 24. And then he has an affirmation here. Love thy neighbor, especially gang-stalking, cruel, cowardly community dupes, for they are lost. And I think that's really the theme of our show here today, Kev, and, and uh, that, that these, these perps on the street are very lost. And he, he has another one. Love thy stalker, especially fire, medical, rescue, and police first harassers, for they are lost. These people are, you know, they tend to be very easily duped. And if somebody flashes a badge and says, okay, we have suspicion that your neighbor might be, a, you know, a pedophile or cheated on his taxes or whatever, we'd like to help you get it, get you to help us with the surveillance. And would you mind if we had put some of this equipment in your house so that, you know, we can, uh, you know, uh, apply our, our uh, radio frequencies to your neighbor's house and, uh, and, you know, trace their every move and or zap them when we want. And, you know, a lot of people would be wouldn't have the, the brains and the fortitude to say, well, you know, what you're talking about is completely unconstitutional. I'm not going to do that. They must get a, at least 20, 30, 50 percent response of, yes, sir, I'll do whatever I can to help. You know, so we have people who who not very smart. And I would imagine, Doc, that these people that they do target to be the perps, I mean, with things like social media and everything else as well, I mean, sometimes we don't kind of emphasize the fact that this is a very, very intellectually put together system that we're, we're dealing with here. And these people at the very top of it, they're far from stupid. And I would imagine even the people that they're picking out to be part of their syndicate they must fall under a certain profile type where they know that there's a likelihood that these people will say yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I have a YouTube that I'd put on uh, my my gangstalking mindcontrolcults.com. It's actually by a Mossad guy, and he tells you how Mossad works. And he says, you know, these Mossad agents believe they are God. No, no, they don't believe it. They know they're God. And uh, he said, here's how it works. We've got five Mossad agents, say, in London. And uh, we've got a list. Each one of them has a list of all the Jews <laughs> in London. And they go through the list and, and you know, call this doctor, this lawyer, and says, okay, will you, uh, will you cooperate with this or that operation? And he says 70% of the people say no. But those 70% never turn them in. And the other 30% say, yes, you know, I'll, I'll cooperate for the benefit of Israel, you know, or whatever. And uh, so that's how they operate. Well, I'm not saying that there is a direct one in one correlation between gang stalking and the Mossad, but there is a very close connection, um, and, which and Gloria look, Naylor. Yeah, yeah. And I just look at the Internet and the fact that, I mean, even on our shows, the attacks that the trolls levy at us. I mean, not, not all trolls are paid disinformation operatives. So here you have people who are willingly, for no money at all and for no other reason other than they can, sitting at home waiting for information to be posted so that they can then spout their venom. Now, these people, I mean, if they were to be approached by handlers or people in the syndicate, can't be too hard to convince them to actually do this on a, on a bigger level and get paid for it because this is the mindset of some of the people around us anyway, Doc. Yeah, and it's very, uh, very disconcerting. You know, I think most of us uh, who, you know, grew up in a decent home, we have a sense that, uh, you know, most of the world's people are good people, you know, and then you have maybe 4% psychopaths. But it's the the 4% psychopaths apparently are very, very tricky and able to get to co-opt others to do things that are psychopathic. And then you have the question, these useful idiots in Lenin's terms, so these street perps, thinking perhaps that they're helping a good cause. Maybe they think they're a good Samaritan, you know, by by targeting this potential terrorist threat, as perhaps the FBI or the local police described, you know, your neighbor. Um, so maybe they're a little bit weak in the mind or maybe they, you know, they just want to go along to get along, but uh, they're co-opted. And really, that's really the topic of our program tonight. But again, if we look at Dr. Ronnie Kilda's book, again, with 30 years of being being targeted, um, she she gets the big picture. 
And this, we need to understand the big picture. Uh, here's what she says. The elite have plans to get ready, rid of two-thirds of the world's population with electromagnetic warfare, chemical warfare, think of chemtrails, and psychological warfare. Okay, in gang stalking, we have electronic warfare, psychological warfare, and chemical warfare. So gang stalking is, you know, really the sharp end of the stick here, or one of the sharp ends. Uh, she says, mind control, MK is listed as a, quote, non-lethal weapon by the military. In 2002, the United Nations Institute for Disarmament Research, UNIDIR in Geneva, Switzerland, designated mind control as a weapon of mass destruction, along with nuclear bombs. This technology links the brains of people. Now, I'm going to say this slowly because it's so important and it's so foreign a concept. This technology links the brains of people via implanted microchips, well, they don't even need those anymore, to satellites controlled by ground-based supercomputers. So we think we understand the world we live in. We do not understand the electromagnetic spectrum. We don't understand how all these wavelengths and frequencies of invisible electromagnetic magnetic energy have been weaponized and are being manipulated by the groups that want total control. This is, you know, total in uh, total control technology. And um, Dr. Ronnie Kilda, as a doctor, understood what was going on decades ago um, and then wrote about it. And of course, then her targeting was was more severe. She says all the U.S. military branches are involved in the de development of, quote, the technology in cooperation with civil institutions like the Department of Health in what is known as, quote, the Neural Network Association. Now this, and she says in, in their 1991 conference, okay, that's like, uh, what, 27 years ago, it was revealed that they submitted and endorsed over 1,000 projects in brain computer technology at 350 medical centers, universities, et cetera. Okay, 1,000 in 1991. Imagine what they have now, Kev. They probably have tens of thousands or more of these projects that involve brain computer technology, experiments on non-consensual experimentees. Uh, this is being done at universities. It's being done at medical centers and hospitals. Uh, these people are scrambling for grant money, and the Pentagon is giving them the grant money. And, you know, all these Department of Health uh, spinoffs. So, um, and this is something that DARPA have been really, really opening the, the purse strings for the amount of programs and projects and startups that you see DARPA getting involved with, Doc, with anything to do with brain machine interfacing, stuff like that. That itself is very telling. And, you know, a thousand back in 91, it must be off the charts by now if we were to see the full extent of this. Yes. And again, this is all hidden in plain sight. You know, these neuroscientists go to, you know, their uh, uh, their professional meetings, maybe 4,000 or four, excuse me, 40,000, according to my brother, who's in a very related field at the University of Massachusetts. Uh, 40,000 neuroscientists will go to we say their annual big conference um, and they'll be talking about just these kinds of things and experiments. And and, uh, you know, you can pretty well figure that many of the talks they're giving are based on the experimentation that they or their group of, of scientists is doing on people who are unaware of it, who've never given their consent. So, uh, you know, we have met the enemy and the enemy is us. Um, these, uh, these professionals, these cognitive scientists, these neuroscientists, uh, you know, they've got to get their grants if they're going to get promoted from you know, a low level assistant professor to a pro associate professor to full professor, whatever, uh, and get their salary increments. So, you know, it's kind of the everybody looking out for their own career, everybody looking out for their own financial well being, and just not thinking about what they're doing uh, in the larger context. But what they're doing is, is they're weaponizing uh, uh, these technologies to the extent where. Uh, the governments of the world now have the ability to control whole whole populations mentally and create cyborgs, uh, robots, robotized human beings. And I think we're seeing this again in these movies over the last 20, 30 years. We're seeing this theme even from the 60s 
of, of creating these cyborg robots. And if sometimes some of your fellow citizens seem to act very strange, well, it could be that they're already amongst us, you know. I think there's more amongst us than any of us dare to imagine, Doc. I really do, because I cover transhumanism, the cloning technology, all that kind of stuff. And I really have to wonder just how many of these clones and altered individuals, shall we say, are in our midst. And I would imagine that it's more than, like I say, we would care to imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think that's quite true. And, uh, so, you know, it's an incremental uh, takedown of society, which has been underway for a long time. You know, G. Edward Griffin uh, is one of the great researchers and wrote The Creature from Jekyll Island about the 1917 uh, Federal Reserve Act. And now it was a conspiracy of European bankers who got that law passed, uh, I guess, 1913 uh, Federal Reserve Act. It was a, definitely a conspiracy. He said, you know, the problem with this country is that the people who lead it are determined to destroy it. And uh, this has been the case since World War II, uh, according to uh, uh, one of the ultimate insiders who uh, wrote the uh, uh, wrote the book, uh, Lieutenant. Oh, gosh, what's in that guy's name? Lieutenant. Uh, he was he was the character in, in the movie JFK, uh, more or less the equivalent of the deep throat who was uh, spilling the beans. But he was a liaison officer between the military and the CIA between 1953 and uh, and 1963. 1955 and 1963, Lieutenant L. Fletcher Prouty. And he says, you know, coming out of World War II, even the military and political leadership of the United States was committed to one world. In other words, a one world uh, government. In other words, destroying the U.S. Constitution and the United States as a political entity. Um, and of course, this gang stalking program, program you know, cr creates two classes of citizens. You're either predators or you're prey. And perfect divide and conquer, perfect way to destroy the country through corruption, uh, through uh, criminality. And, uh, you know, I go back to the uh, uh, 1776 documents of the Bavarian Illuminati, uh, you know, which, which launched the Rothschilds into global uh, ascendance in terms of economic. And, and you're a program for world takeover. You're right to go that far back because that is where we'll be right back. This is the Camp Baker Show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The unfortunate thing is we've only got one segment left tonight with Dr. Eric. Karlstrom and we have been going in depth into the world of gang stalking and this time we've been looking at the perps, the people on the ground. We've been pulling from the information of alleged whistleblowers who are actually working within these programs. We've also been referring back to Ronnie Kilda's book as well. And I'm just looking for the name of that. They're from Bright Light on Black Shadows and that is really one of the biggest and best sources out there for anything to do with these topics. And I'm really, really proud of Truth Frequency Radio for allowing myself and Doc to put these shows on. Because, you know, not every network out there will cover this stuff. And it's for obvious reasons. You talk about this stuff, you're basically painting a crosshairs on your back. And we've got thousands of people tuned in right now listening to this. And by the math that we were going over earlier on, that is 100 million people potentially in the US as part of this surveillance squad policing all of their fellow citizens. We're talking about one third of the people of that population potentially being involved in these programs. So that means out of every thousand listeners listening to this show tonight, 333 of you will potentially at some point be asked to play a part in these programs. Just think about that. You know, there's maybe 100 people in the chat room right now. That means 33 chatters in there, statistically, may be asked at some point or may be made at some point to take part in these operations. 
that's the extent and the level of the programs that we are talking about. Look around you, folks. A third of the people will be asked. Now, I'm not saying a third of the people tuned in tonight are actively participating in these programs, but bear in mind that this affects us all. And if you're not targeted on any level, then I would imagine at some point, somehow, some way, somebody is going to try and co-opt you into this kind of thing. And tonight we're trying to put the emphasis on don't be a perp. You look at the internet right now and there's so many unpaid trolls out there and they just do it because they get a kick out of it. For some reason, they just love to harass other people. I'm not saying that that actually applies to anyone listening to this, but we've all seen the trolls. We've all seen the keyboard warriors. And I get that some of them are already enrolled into these operations. This is their actual job, going out and trying to cause arguments, divide and conquer again. But just think how easily it would be to rope in some of these people who are just doing this for the hell of it. That is why it's so important that we continue to cover all of these topics and very humbled and very blessed to be working with something like Dr. Eric Karlstrom. And, you know, no matter how hard things get in the future for me personally, I certainly won't be shying away from this topic. In fact, if anything more was to happen to me, it would have an adverse effect on the controllers, the handlers, the syndicate out there. Because it only took me a week, maybe 10 days the last time to get off my hospital bed, come back on air. Not only that, but double down on my airtime, one hour to two. And it persuaded me and convinced me that I have to keep going. And Doc, that's why I'm so glad that you too are going to keep going, keep shining the bright light on black shadows to steal from Ronnie Kilda herself. And I want to thank you publicly on air for all the work that you're doing, Doc, all this research tirelessly and putting it out there to no advantage, no financial gain on your part, nothing like that, just to try and help people around you. So again, I publicly thank you for continuing to come on the Kev Baker Show and do what you do. Well, thank you, Kevin. And, and, you know, when I heard about your health problems and then more recently Johnny's health problems, I've actually, you know, considered, well, do I want to keep doing this? Because, I, you know, I feel terrible that I have something to do perhaps with the, you know, with, with the, the problems that Johnny is facing and that you faced in terms of health. And, and I've come to the same conclusion that you have, which is that, you know, we have to keep going, um, even if there is a risk to our own health and our, you know, and our, our family's well-being, et cetera, uh, because this is a program that's being unrolled uh, all over the world. And there has to be a, a, a groundswell of individuals. I don't want to lead this thing. There's no, no way I can lead it. it ha- it's, it's, it's global. And so leaders have to emerge in kind of a um, unpredictable manner uh, in order to to roll this thing back, in order to expose it, to educate our fellows uh, citizens, and to defeat it, uh, to make the guilty accountable, and to get recompense, uh, financial recompense, hopefully, for the uh, individuals who have been tortured and who are being tortured in this program. Um, this is this this is a program I think designed in hell, and I think it kind of fulfills the Illuminati's objectives, which were articula- articulated back in 1776 in their own documents, saying, "Okay, we we want to take over the world, we want to destroy the monarchy, we want to destroy the nation states, we want to destroy religion, we want to destroy the family, we want to destroy private property." All of the institutions that protect society and individuals from our control. Well, they've been working on this furiously since 1776. Marx's Communist Manifesto is a rearticulation of those goals. The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, which came out at the First World Zionist Congress in 1897, is a rearticulation of those goals. And, you know, if you're if you've got the stomach for reading the protocols, it's like reading something that Satan himself wrote. Uh, it's, it's so profoundly evil 
it's hard for most people to digest. And and the amount of evil in this program is, according to Dr. Ronnie Kilda and her interviews with some perps, uh, deliberate. And it's one of they regard it as a uh, as one of their trump cards. Uh, they say, well, people can't imagine this mu- this amount of evil. So that's actually um, uh, kind of works to our own benefit. Uh, she does in her book, uh, Bright Light on Black Shadows, and uh, came coming out in 2015. She does an interview with uh, 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 a maid, and uh, you know it's uh, it's kind of put in fictional terms. She changes the names. But you get the idea that, in fact, she was talking to somebody directly herself and uh, that she's reconstructing that that conversation. This was in 1985. Um, She's talking to this maid who now is admitting what's going on. um, And she's objecting, say, well, somebody's going to oppose this, you know. Um, And then she's saying the, the maid is saying, well, we have them, too. Uh, we, we control the Red Brigade, the, the Bonhoeff Strauss gang, the Hells Angels. They all work closely with the very top. Everybody takes bribes, and they are trained by the tops of the military from every country. This is 1985. Unknowingly, they get microchipped. So we have gang, uh, the military as a mind control operation, which is exactly the same thing that Kay Griggs, ex-military wife, said in her 1998 interviews. goes about eight hours which I've got on my website, and I've transcribed those. Uh, Kay Griggs is somebody to listen to. She's a direct descendant of, of James Madison. She's got a master's degree in Scottish history, by the way, um, uh, Kev. But anyway, what she says uh, in those interviews very much uh, corroborates the idea that the top tiers of the military are ganged up with the Brooklyn and the New Jersey mafia. Uh, and it's one thing, basically, controlling the ports, and that they are, in fact, the top people are are uh, sexual deviants. They're pedophiles. They have been homosexually recruited from a young age, put in the top universities like Princeton, like her husband was, and then go on into the Marine Corps. And uh, they they are the brotherhood, the syndicate that runs things in the established part of the U.S. military and politics. Uh, anyway, so going back to this testimony of the maid, she says, uh, with a gas, they knock you out during sleep. A tiny cut in the back of the spine. They also cut your chin and down, leaving a tiny blood stripe on purpose to scare you. So in other words, the top people uh, have been terrorized into cooperating with the system. They use everybody when needed to their purposes. So pray for them. Pray for the people that are part of this system from the top to the bottom, because they are under satanic oppression, as far as I can tell. The covert activities of humans or possession. The covert activities of humans to mass enslave humans are done with lies, misinformation, covert, grotesque human exploitation and manipulation. They call it the silent war, or or they call it the person-to-person war. There will be an agent to every three people in Norway, this is Norway, uh, which she says has been a personal experimenting ground for the uh, CIA since 1980 in terms of these mind control experiments. The beauty of this is that no one is really doing much harm because no one really knows what the other is doing, but combined it kills. Now think of the movie Kev uh, murder on the Orient express. It's just remade. And each one of the people, the murderers stabs the victim once. And so, you know, the, the inspector who solves the crime feels compelled to let them all go because heck they're nice people and they, none of them, you know, you can't prove which one dealt the death blow. So he lets them all go. Well, this is exactly an an analogy for what happens in our society now with all these people doing a death of a thousand cuts, deliberate psychological warfare against targeted individuals, uh, which is designed over time cumulatively to to destroy the victim, uh, get the victim to, you know, commit suicide or kill somebody else or become mentally uh, institutionalized. it is, it is a, you know, personal destruction program, but it's done with a death of a thousand cuts. And she says, going on to this testimony, it all happens over several years, so no one reacts. And it only, uh, uh, she says, one person in a family, only one person in the family gets hit. They have the technology which goes direct to your brain and can make you crazy, paranoid, or angry. The idea is that during your sleep at 4 a.m., they wake you up to destabilize your sleep pattern is 1985, to wear you down. TV, radio, CDs will t- 
turn on by themselves. All electrical items will function as a slow killer. Okay, now then we get into the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, when, when all the electrical gadgets are cooperating, the uh, unity of, uh, you know, Kev, what, what, what is that, uh, uh, when all the, all your electronic devices are coordinated. Um, Synchronized? Yeah, the the the, uh, the the Internet of Things, that's what they call That's called. the one, yes. And I mean, yeah. with 5G coming online soon as well, one, yeah. can, one can only imagine what that will do for all of these programs, Doc. Well, that's why we have to fight this thing now and defeat it. Again, I don't want to be the one to tell people to get out and cut those cell phone towers down. But I think if there's one thing that could be done that would stop this thing... Uh, short of an electromagnetic pulse, which would take out all of the all of the electromagnetic magnetic signals and probably save the Earth from this this dastardly fate, it would be to just dis, uh, disable the cell towers uh, and somehow disable the uh, satellites, of course, and the supercomputers, which undoubtedly are in these deep underground bases, military bases. Then she says the implant uh, uh, the implants on the walls and roofs. Uh, they implant your walls and roofs with magnets and make a sign on your roof or house to be hit when the real blitz starts and you will hear a sound in every room all night following you from room to room. Now, this is the maid <laughs> speaking to the lady of the house. This is how they drive you nuts, you see. A psychiatrist will say you suffer from schizophrenia, paranoia, and combined with a worm filament in your system, which will work like a Sputnik triggered by a computer program when it rests, it lies in the elbow or hand or wrists, uh, giving constant pain. This knuckle will be somewhat paralyzed for periods of time. The worm will eat up energy centers in your back spine, starting from the bottom up. And then she says in parentheses, at this point, I was paralyzed from listening to all this evil. She continued, Satanism, you see, is our strongest card because no one will take it seriously. The whole idea is to be as evil as possible because it is unthinkable to normal people. No one can digest it. And then Eve says, the, the lady of the household says, who started all this? Oh, you don't understand. It is practiced on the highest levels of government. We have meetings in the desert on the largest ranches in the U.S., and everybody thinks up, thinks up the most evil thing one can do to another person. The CIA is directly involved, actually very heavily. We can also make ourselves transparent, but not everyone, only certain chosen for specific tasks. We have seances and do mass concentrations on a victim, you know, curses, hell's angels, Nazism and Satanism is propagated from the same source. And my note here is, uh, yeah, J Judeo Masonic Satanism, the Kabbalah. Um, anyway, yeah. So you and I have done programs on the satanic aspects of uh, gang stalking, and and here we we hear those uh, aspects being articulated uh, and affirmed. So and you know. Uh, with this yeah. coming from the very upper echelons of the elites, and we talked about the even the formation of the Illuminati and all of these elite families, they seem to have one thing in common. It doesn't matter what period of time you look at. The elites have always been worshippers of Satan. And that's why I would find it almost suspicious if we weren't to see a satanic aspect to the gang stalking, the targeted individuals because this is coming from them at the very top. And as I've learned over the years, not just doing shows with yourself, but so many other people, whistleblowers from some of these higher up families as well, there is nothing that happens without this dark spiritual aspect to it. And to your ordinary man or woman on the street, that, that's where it becomes so clever because it is hard for people to grasp. It does seem ridiculous, all of the the kind of stuff that we go into at times, if people aren't ready to accept that there is a very, very satanic undertone to everything that's going on right now. Yeah, and the key, I think, in all of this, um, which is demonstrated time and time and time again, it's demonstrated in the many, many excellent interviews by the, the uh, British lady, uh, Kathy Morgan, who's a victim of uh, satanic ritual abuse, MK Ultra, mind control. Uh, this is what the Illuminati do to their own kids in order to control them and fragment their personalities and create uh, essentially robots who can be programmed and triggered to do um, anything from, you know, uh, Manchurian candidate assassinations to being sex programmed 
uh, like, say, Marilyn Monroe or being a spy or a courier. Uh, this is based on, again, the Jewish Kabbalah, uh, the programming, the the uh, system of altars, subalters in the human mind, which is done by the rape of the child and other traumatic experiences uh, that are done ritually between the ages of zero and six. And this goes way back to the Egyptian Book of the Dead. But certainly the Illuminati have, have, you know, done this to their own kids over the years. And then they think they're producing, you know, kind of artificial geniuses because, you know, they, they can program them then to become, you know, really good at this and that and the other. And they take smart people from the beginning. But if you're a smart little kid of three and you, you're being tortured in this manner, either by, you know, pedophilia or by some kind of a satanic ritual, um, you, you, you can't just, uh, um, uh, okay, if you're over six, you, you would experience post-traumatic stress syndrome or shell shock. If you're less than six, what you do is you dissociate, you check out. It's almost like your mind and soul just leaves the body in order to survive. And at that point, the trainers, these Kabbalistic trainers, know how to split off an alter personality, which they can then name and uh, train up to do this, that, and the other. And then they put it in a system of subalters, which is a kind of a psychological uh, system that goes inside the mind of the young person. And this is a very deliberate program. And, and th this is exposed. And if you care to read my article, Mind Control History and Applications, which I wrote, read and uh, wrote in 2012 from many, many, many sources, this, this, this process is described. Well, the CIA perfected this process <laughs> and worked with it uh, in, in their MKUltra experiments. And now it's unleashed on the public. It's not just Illuminati kids. It's all kinds of kids, kids of military, kids of intelligence people who've been subjected to these kinds of trauma-based mind control, pedophilia. So at the top level, pedophilia is, is uh, critical. And, and uh, you know, so they are sexual deviants. And that's one way, of course, they silence everybody because, you know, they can all, they've got the goods on each other. And so no one's going to rat it out because then they could be blackmailed, et cetera. So, yeah, there's a Satanism, but but it's 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 also this ugly, ugly pedophilia and traumatic uh, abuse, which is used uh, to control and alter people's minds to create uh, these uh, uh, these Manchurian candidate type people. Now, this can all be done electronically. Uh, you don't have to have the uh, the pedophilia. This can be done with electromagnetic uh, frequencies and wavelengths. Exactly. And, you know, I just hope that. The people out there listening to this tonight, I mean, I hope you can take something not only from this show, but all of the other shows that we have done as well, because it's this information right here that we are going to be able to use to wake others up around us, because that's what we need to do. We need to create that groundswell of people who just say, no, enough of this. And, and we really do need to start tackling this problem head on. We really do. And, Doc, we've got only about five minutes left, and I'm sure me and you could probably do a show that runs for 10 hours and still not run out of material. But you've been thinking about a couple of strategies yourself, and I know we've only got a few minutes left, but I would love for you to leave the listeners with something positive, something that they can do themselves or they can try themselves to combat all of this. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the nature of the program is very complex. I think there's several things, you know, and we need to understand it and name it in order to defend ourselves from it. And that's why we've been doing these shows to try to get a grasp of it. And I've and I put together a whole bunch of acronyms for it, uh, which I think describe it maybe more accurately than the terms gang stalking and targeted individuals. Those those very much are half truths, but it, it involves so much more. But they, in general, there are lots of mind control experiments going on, the creation of cyborg, the cloning of the brain. Um, uh, the military people love this because they want to be able to see through the eyes of their soldiers in the battlefield and blah, 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 blah. And they can with this technology. But what we can do is we can learn different ways of shielding. Uh, we can do what this guy who publishes the Westfield Gang Stalker did. We can send around flyers to our neighbors uh, we can put bumper stickers on our truck, which I've done, 
and I will refuse to take those bumper stickers off. <laughs> they say things like gang stalking is murder and gang stalkers go to hell, both of which I believe. Uh, they say things like uh, shooters equal MCIA's MK Ultra. Um, things like I love my country, but I fear my government. We have to take back the high ground. We believe in the Constitution in the America. We believe in the New Testament. And if we can hold on to the values that made this country and expose the criminals, things will be turned around because, you know, we are, it could be in the last days where they, you know, they will call evil good and good evil. So they, they tend to take these targeted individuals and say, oh, he's a, he's a pedophile or he's a, you know, she's a prostitute. When in fact, they're the pedophiles, they're the criminals. And so we have this complete inversion of reality. And of course, this is a consistent pattern with the Kabbalah. It's the Kabbalah is the manipulation of uh, and the and complete completely ignoring reality and constructing a false matrix, a false reality matrix through magic. And uh, this is what they're all into. It's, they're funny black you say there, it's funny you use the term there though the inversion of reality and this just goes to show the golden thread that I often talk about that strings one show onto the other. Because just last week, unbeknown to the doc, I was doing a show and I entitled it Bizarro Land. Just when did reality turn upside down? And that's exactly what we're talking about here, doc. It's an inversion of everything. When good becomes evil, evil becomes good. And that is the society that we are now witnessing unfolding all around us. Yeah, and, and these people seem to know, you know, the adage that uh, whom the gods would destroy, they first drive insane. And and they're driving our nations insane with through their ownership of the media and through their use of weaponized psychology. I think you could make the case that the TIs are the ones who haven't gone crazy and they're doing their very best to make us crazy and, and put us in this artificial hell. And I think our best bet is to find the positive, to to be in nature, to uh, love God, uh, to realize that God's reality is much, much greater than this black magic reality, which is trying to engulf us. Um, yeah, I'm lucky enough to live in a beautiful place in Crestone, Colorado. I've got the mountains right behind my home. Uh, so I'm constantly reminded, uh, you know, and so I've got three beautiful dogs and they're a lot of fun and and I love good music and, and there's feed yourself with positive things because what is being done is they're trying to destroy the psyche of the individual again through the death of a thousand cuts to just, you know, just make you feel like your life is hell. Well, don't let them put you in hell. Realize that the greater reality is, is God's reality and that in the end that, uh, that will triumph. And I, I do believe that. But meanwhile, I think, you know, necessity being the mother of invention, we do have this enormous challenge right now. And all we can do, Kev, is just try to step up to the bat and do our best and detach from results and keep keep slugging away. And, yeah. you know, pray for each other. Pray for Johnny. Get our listeners to pray for Johnny um, and, uh, and you and me. I mean, because we are, it appears, targeted. I know I'm targeted. Uh, you you are not quite sure about yourself and Johnny. I know I'm targeted. I, know I don't I've been want to go down that road country. of the alternative media host that, that makes himself the victim, Doc. But yes, I, I'm very aware that I could be a targeted individual for sure. And I want everyone to talk out. Check out Dr. Carlstrom's website, gangstalkingmindcontrolcult.com. Until next time, wherever you are, make it P.S. 